Small thing here, uh, I would notice when you were dueling the Zen, um, this is 100% melee range. Uh, and when you even see him reloading and going around the corner here, just give yourself the easy kill, get the get the blink melee off. And yeah, I didn't even see her, she came out of nowhere. <laughs> he passed into the blink, yeah. uh, to the pause, because it was going to stick like, Get down, Mr. President. So I can tell a little bit about myself. I sure. think I told you. I play in two teams, so one in EU, one in NA. I'm an EU player. That used to live in NA, so I li I, I'm still on an NA team because I just like playing on a team. Uh, I play Overwatch around six to eight uh, hours a day. Um, currently peaked at three, four, eight, one. Uh, I see you linked two VODs. Um, yeah. Is there one in particular you'd rather review first in case we don't have time to fully go over both? Um, let's do the EU one, which is the other one, I think. All right, so not Volskaya. All right, so given that this is a scrim VOD and not just, say, rank play, we can probably talk a little bit deeper about more than just, like, your individual mechanics and decision-making. We can talk more about what your intentions are with for the composition and the matchups and the map and stuff like that. Sure. Um, so before even jumping into the gameplay, is there anything, uh, any questions you want to get out the gate about this composition, how it's played, how it's played on this map, how it's played in this matchup, anything like that? Well, our composition's kind of like uh, double bubble, but mm -hmm. uh, I know it's like something new. Like that's what like Natter's talking about, like how good it is and, and why not. So like, I think the only like swap you would do is like swap the Echo, I guess, uh, for Tr Sombra, and that would be like the original one that's played in I think Asia, right? Or, mm -hmm. uh, There's a couple different variants, yeah, but generally revolving around these two tanks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, uh, I know that you, um, as Tracer, your job is to set up and position and wait for a scout. So like scout and then, I think, I'm not sure, uh, a scout and uh, gain information and then go from there and then wait for your, your dive tanks, or your dive to do a dive. Because uh, depending on what comp they run, because you can also brawl with the comp. So like, my monkey just doesn't jump in and dive, you brawl more with it. You play more front line yeah. Yeah, so then, yeah, but Trey is just more like gaining their backline and just following up on the damage that is outputted, I think. Yeah, for sure. So you've already covered a lot there, uh, but just to sort of recap for my own purpose, um, <laughs> we're going to be looking out for the pre-fight scouting and positioning, making sure you're coming not just from a single angle and not just following your Winston, you're setting up your own angles. Uh, we're going to make sure you're following up on the tank's timing so you're syncing with that double bubble engagement that's so strong. Uh, and then, like you said, the damage follow-up is the most important job for, for Tracer in this in this meta, I would say, where you're sort of half committing until your tanks are ready, and then you're all inning looking to finish those kills. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing else, I think we can just jump right into it. Yeah. All right. So Blizzard World, I think this is actually a really good map for this composition on attack. A little unlucky for your Ana there, though. Yeah. Good punishment on the ball. So given that your Ana just died... Setup's probably going to take a little longer than expected, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Ooh. So, this is the danger of Ash in versus uh, Tracer, even without even with that damage nerf, she still one-shots you, right? So, I liked that you were blinking to get from cover to cover, like from here to here. I, I think since you're so far away from your first engage still, just commit the double blink. Make sure you're in safety to cover there before you... Uh, before you uh, save your cooldowns, because it's more important for you to get in position uh, than it is to have your cooldowns up right away at this moment. Okay. Small thing, but it can add up. On this map, do you have any particular routing that you prefer as Tracer? Um, I don't like this map from Tracer, but <laughs> I normally go drop <laughs> left and then go wrap around. Like mm hmm where I go left side, but yeah, I think I wrap around. Yeah, I like this movement a lot already. Using this uh, second point of the map. So this is sort of an interesting moment. So obviously your team right now is looking for not a hard engage, but a soft engage to create some space for your Echo. And at the same time, you're dueling Sombra. And this can be both good and bad. I'm not sure what the communication is like for your team at this moment, but it's important that your team knows that this is not a hard engage because you're not there to ready to follow up, right? Mm -hmm. So, number one, is good that you're able to scout out 
and mark the Sombra because if she's there to counter your dive and one of your tanks get hacks, gets hacked, it can be a really bad time, obviously, right? So this is good marking, um, but you need to be really careful that your team knows that the tempo is changing because of this duel going on. So it looks like we have a pretty good understanding of this. We're not like hard engaging. Monkey's not like looking to commit up here or anything like that, which is fine. Um, but just something to keep in mind as the Tracer player. You're basically, given that you're the one finding all this information, you need to be the one dictating that to your team so they can adjust tempo-wise. Getting back to the duel, forcing her out is really good. Got some support from Brig, so it seems like the communication is on point. And now we're ready to hard commit. So this is perfect setup, actually. Let me just rewind real quick and watch this from third person POV. So this is what happens when you don't do anything versus double bubble. When they have no resources to regain space and they're just forced into a corner like this, there's nothing to punish the monkey for his soft dive and then they're just sitting ducks up there basically. And just to outline all the things that went right during this, number one, obviously the ball was punished early, he died early, so he was already in an awkward spot. And the Sombra who was looking to counter this aggression got forced out by you. So really, really good job there. And then the aggression call that came out right after that, when we know they're low on resources, when Ball won't have a good rollout, when Sombra forced her translocator already, and she's not in a position to counter hack, this is perfect opportunity, and the routing you took was really, really good. Basically, like you said, Blizzard World, there's not a ton of room for you on Tracer. There are... no, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like your Ash. Yeah. I, I'm not a good Tracer player because I'm more like focus on Ash, Tracer, and I mean, Ash, McCree, and the Widow. Like, mm -hmm. the full like hit. But I play Tracer just because Tracer's like meta and like both yeah, the hero for the composition, are, like, it's very bad. <laughs> so she's just such a unique hero that, for example, like there's no other hero that could force up, force out this Sombra and then also follow the dive, right? Like if you were McCree, mm -hmm. sure you could force out the Sombra, but then you'd basically be doing nothing during this dive. So mm -hmm. Tracer's like mobility and that flexibility she offers is just so huge. And I think you really showcased that during this dive. So nice job. Other things you can be looking out for um, in these setups are, number one, you already saw the ball and the, the Sombra, but if they're ever trying to find this over aggression or this counter aggression in a sense, um, you are definitely the one to mark them. You and Brig are extremely good at doing that. And when you are able to punish those cooldowns like we saw, it just shows how much it opens up the map. Nice safety blink there away from the Ash. We learned our lesson. Even there, I think you're being a little a little bold here. <laughs> Ends up forcing a recall. Oh yeah, this is a really dangerous duel. So, yeah, and there comes the death. So, one, really good to find this pressure because this is the space you want, right? You want to clear up these stairs. You want to take this high ground. You want to be able to follow up dives either on, on pylon if they're back here or if they're not taking any space, if they're like down on the ground, and you can do all of that from this high ground. So you're playing for the right space, but you're going a little bit too quickly. So as soon as you see Ash, and the fact that she wasn't alone was even like more of a big deal, Ash at this range, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, you should know at this point that her team should be roughly around this area, if we rewind a bit when we first saw her, uh, like around here. Yeah, you knew at least one was with her, at least Brig Sigma were with her, and then even more ball came and peeled for her as well. So this duel is a little bit too ambitious, I would say. Oh, yeah. Ways you could have done this better is just playing slower. She's not in a good position right now. And that means that it doesn't mean you can punish it, but it means the rest of your team isn't fighting for space at this moment. Like she's not up here poking down your tanks or anything. So all this, all this map is basically free for your team right now. And you mm -hmm. can coordinate a dive to punish this Ash, but you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. If this was Zen, go in for the one clip. But the fact that it's Ash, someone that can actually challenge you, especially from this range, you got to be a little more cautious. Mm -hmm. I just fast forward through that again. Yeah, even even at that point, when right after you recalled, you had an opportunity to maybe like double blink back here, and you've burned a couple of resources from her and given information to your team about where she is, and then you set up the dive together. This composition, this double bubble, only works when the pieces are sort of fitting together, the, the cogs of the clock are turning together. There are little things so you can hard. do anyway. Sorry? That's why it's so hard. That's why Nader says it's so hard to uh, to play this comp because it's very team communicated and like. Mm -hmm. I find it's it's an interesting composition because like it's it's hard to execute coordinated plays like with all of these members. Obviously, yes, but at the same time, like they inherently fit together so well, right? It's not hard to like bubble your monkey during the jump and have tracer follow up. It's about that setup cost 
and the time it takes to make sure you're in the right position to make that play work. And I think there's some confusion going around where it's like the comp itself, like mechanically, I don't think is hard to play, but understanding the all the pieces that go into it, that's what's hard. And I think that's what was missing during that little duel with Ash there. So keep in mind, you're not just playing Tracer, you're playing Tracer for this composition for the rest of your team as well. And there's a few jobs that change just because of that. All right, we're going the same routing. Good punishment on the Brig. Yeah, when you're at that range of Brig, she can't do anything. Good punish. And yeah, you see how much easier this is when, like, even if Ash was with that Brig, the fact that your monkey was here just creating pressure and Ash or anyone basically wouldn't be able to look directly at you throughout the whole fight means you're basically free during these engages. And that's what that's exactly what you're looking for. That should be the state that you're trying to achieve. Nice punish on the Ash from your Ana. Again, ooh, a little bit awkward reload time. Let that hack come through, but it seems like your team's got your back. So that was good. Um, if I were to nitpick a little bit there for that somber engagement, um, just to rewatch it one more time. So one, going into this without recall available um, is a little bit ambitious and at this point, like, when you see the hack coming out, you need to do something to do damage. Uh, I would say just, like, melee again. Back-to-back -back melee, cancel her hack, and then reload. Uh, it's, like, such a small thing, and because your team has this much map pressure anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, if we look where the rest of their team is, they're nowhere near, and which is why you don't get punished. But anytime you're in this in this duel, Tracer should 100% win the duel versus Sombra, right? Do we agree on that? Yeah. So it's just small things that you do to make that play come through, and the biggest thing is making sure you never get hacked. Um, so if that means staying at a little bit longer range and using cover like this, so you can just jiggle peek away from the hack, if it means, uh, waiting for your resources to be fully up, whether that's blinks or recall, or in this case, ammo as well, uh, make sure you're taking the time to do that because these situations can quickly turn sour. And yeah, just lucky enough that when they, they come to peel, your, uh, your hack wears off. Talk to me about this pulse bomb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I saw, uh, what do you call it? You saw Zen Brig? Yeah, I, I like whiffed it because I flicked to the left to the right. Mm -hmm. you know, and I also should not pulse it. I actually had recall, so it was fine. I don't know why I re didn't recall. I think you just got caught up there by the Discord damage. Biggest thing though, if you're lining up a blink pulse, um, mm -hmm. I'm ex your mechanics already look like you're at a pretty strong level, so I'm going to assume you know like the, the animation cancel with the pulse first, yeah. then blink. Yeah. Make sure that you're setting that up and not... You know, let me hide chat real quick. Make sure you're setting that up and not trying to add any guesswork to this play. If we go back and just replay this really quickly. Down for the count. Slowing it down here. Like, you know your target, yeah. but you don't give yourself the time to execute the play. You, you blink in blind, and then you have to readjust to find the zen. If, if this is the case, if you're going in blind and you're putting yourself in more of a dual situation instead of just a set play situation, um, you might want to like double blink behind the Zen so he can't hit you. Different things you can take. Just take the fight a little bit more seriously other than just a pulse play. Um, or take the time to set up the pulse play, basically. like Make sure you're getting an angle and you know exactly where the Zen's going to be. You can predict his movement. You can get within one blink range or two blink range if it's that far. And then execute the pulse stick right away. And I think, I think you were just a little overconfident more than anything. Because, <laughs> yeah, he must have just hit a headshot on the way in, Discord body shot, and you're done. You do end up getting the Brig via uh, the Ananade there eventually, but overall could have been cleaner. All right, third point. I hate Hello, third Kitty. point. You are a to the team. I don't know how to play third point, honestly. <laughs> so I go bottom left, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like it's so hard to play bottom left if they're like holding like different angles. There's the so thing hard. about this composition is it only really works if these three members can individually find space and then it and then collaboratively close distance. So on second point, first point, it's very simple. Like if you're closing space around the pylon, for example. It's easy for you to get in here, relatively easy. It's easy for your monkey to come in main. It's easy for your echo to fly from an angle. And then you all converge at the same time. And it, it just 
relatively easy to execute. Of course, there's a lot of communication and setup that goes into that, but compare that to a point like third point where everything's closed off. It's much easier for heroes like um, Ash, Briggs, Zen to hold these angles and basically deny your entry. Um, and that makes your job a lot harder, obviously. There's a couple ways you can change up your play style. Um, number one, obviously, you could try switching heroes to something more static, like an Ash or a McCree, like you were talking about earlier, okay. where you can basically yeah. you can like play that. like where the monkey is jumping from and then just use the space that he's creating to manipulate uh, your range and get a lot of damage off that way. Or you can try to keep Tracer, but you need to play a lot more um, conservatively, I would say. Either yeah, that means just times. and then I like I, I swapped to Kree because I was I was like team I can't do this. I honestly <laughs> can't. Like I yeah. don't know how to play this at this point. It's basically harder not just for you, but for the echo also in these type of scenarios. And it's not impossible. Um, especially in these scrim settings in coordinated play, you want to try and snowball this point as much as possible. So like for example, since you just won second point, if you can set up to the point where you have control of this corner, maybe even this corner, by having maybe you up here, Echo maybe down here, ready to converge already, then this point's easy. But it's breaking through these like initial corners and these tight corridors that become really, really hard. Um, I would definitely say don't be afraid to swap in these kind of situations because you can only get so far bashing your head against the wall with the same composition over and over. But at the same time, if this is something you're looking to practice as a team or you individually as a Tracer player, um, there are a few things you can do differently. Um, number one, I would say try to flank a little bit less. And number two, coordinate a lot with your other DPS and take space together if you are looking to, to push flanks. Or, or also, you can also think of Brig for the same job. So for example, if you're looking to clear this space, you're likely not going to be able to do it alone. But if you coordinate with your other DPS, whoever that is, if it's Sombra, if it's Echo, if it's Ash even, um, you can work together to win a 2v1 duel and then set up your flank. Or you can do the same thing with Brig, where Brig can use her shield uh, and her close range presence to just like peek around this corner, peek around this corner. If there's someone close by here, like Zen or Brig, off on their own, you can win that 2v1 duel and push through. Okay. So basically, your individual job that makes Tracer so good becomes a lot harder to do, so you'll, you're going to need some backup, most likely. You could argue the same could be said for um, the way tanks position, like you could want a tank to come bodyguard you through these setups. Um, but typically they're, they're playing their own game at this point and they need to manage the front line a bit better. So already, this is a, this is a decent amount of space if we look at the map. Um, you've already passed this corner. This is basically guaranteeing the cart's going to get like at least here. And then you're going to be looking for backline probably here or in main. Um, I think and we win from the where fight, you... the next fight, I think we struggle on because of the like it turns to the corner where their spawn is, and that's mm -hmm. just hard. and there's just nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Again, this this composition is all about the setup, and if you just can't do that setup because of the map geometry, then it loses a lot of its power. Nice force trance. Monkey should be fine there. He's got primal soon as well. I like how you didn't commit to that. Unfortunate, it had to recall there, but. It is what it is. At this point, um, the moment you see that EMP, I think you need to assume that pressure is going beyond where you can influence it. Do you know what I mean by that? No. So basically, where you're set up here, mm -hmm. you're ready for a fight on this corner, right? You're ready for punishing it. this Ash if she tries to peek up here. You're ready to follow up any dives on Zen because he's walking up. You're ready to punish people who try to push through these corridors and hit them in the back. Basically, everything in this big circle, you're ready to punish. The problem is, you're the only one ready to punish. Uh, and because the fight is actually going on beyond this, um, it's not like a huge engagement from them. Obviously, like these members aren't part of it. Ash isn't a part of it. But the amount of pressure that these members, and the Sombra as well, who just died, are putting pressure this far into your team means that you are now isolated from the rest of them. What that means uh, for what you need to do next, basically, is you need to either guarantee a 1v1 situation where you can punish someone for overextending, but in this situation, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. One, she still has rally armor. Two, she's got supports in LOS. This is a very hard duel to take. Um, yep. So either you're going to find someone who's overextending by accident. Like maybe if Ash went up here and Zen Brig were all the way up here, you could try and punish it. But more likely, uh, you're going to have to play more passively here and either get out of the fight or look to set up more, look to stay set up aggressively so that the next fight um, you can be ready for from the same position. 
but what that means in general still is no committing, no giving away your positioning, uh, no forcing these duels, because the, the chance of you winning this is extremely low. And it's it's all off the bat of them pushing past where your ideal fight zone was. And the, the trigger for you, I think, should have been the fact that they committed EMP out there. Yeah, but what do you do after that? Because Ash knows I'm top there. Like, what do you rotate? You just wait there in that corner? Yeah, either you try to bait her into you and then force a 1v1 in, like, tighter corridors like this. But again, the likelihood of that happening without support is very, very low. Or you you even just, like, regroup with your team and fully regroup and set up for the next fight. Um, because, again, you're not going to win this duel unless they completely misplay and play away from each other. Um, and it, like you said, if they already knew you you were there, there's basically not much you can do from this position. You can try and make a hero play like you did, but without pulse bomb, without them misplaying in some sort of way, it's a very, very hard thing to execute. So I would recommend from the situation you were in just to back out, get with your team, maybe try to punish some of the aggression they were getting, uh, but not definitely not from this angle. And like you said, this map, it, this map is not great for tracers. You'd likely have to go all the way back out to make a difference in that fight. Yeah. I do, yeah. I do play a bit longer, trying to see what I eventually I just swap. Oh, yeah. Not bad trying to punish that Zen. I think you could have saved Recall if instead of committing all your blinks to getting directly on the Zen and expecting to try and find that kill, um, you're just blinking aggressively to force him out, understanding that you need to wait for more resources, and then just sort of playing LOS from that end. Wait for your resources to come back, because already you found value from this pressure. Um, going back here, you've already taken away this position from Zen and Brig by forcing them this way. You don't need to also get a kill based on the amount of cooldown management you had. Like you commit two blinks basically to get on top of this Zen. Um, you can't finish the kill right away. You probably don't want to directly blink in, blink in, because Brig's there to punish. Um, but you could have just waited for your blink three blinks even. So yeah, at this point, just hide at this pillar. You've already forced them back. You've already denied a lot of values Zen's going to find in any of this space. This is guaranteeing your team's going to be able to move up. It guarantees your backline's going to be safe from that poke damage. Uh, and then you just wait for your cooldowns to come back up. Wait, Make sure you have three blinks available for the follow-up for the next dive. Um, and this is, this is sort of something that I talk to main tanks a lot about. Uh, it's like the sort of difference between soft committal and hard committal. From here... Seeing the Zen here, it's very hard to hard commit here. Unless he's absolutely alone, he doesn't know yet you're, that you're coming for him, uh, he's got no backup when he tries to kite, it's going to be hard to net that kill. So even just soft committing to here, say, forcing the Zen back, basically he doesn't want to be caught in a dual range, uh, and then waiting for the next set of cooldowns, whether that's with or without your team, depending on how the fights are going, then you can commit harder with more blinks, with recall available, with full HP, stuff like that. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I um, think you just I keep. Think, I go just ahead. try to do a lot of DPS and try to <laughs> carry yeah. fights. I don't know, like, but sometimes carrying fights is just taking it patiently. I just don't mm -hmm. know. I it's it's an that. easy trap to fall into because you want to maximize your uptime, you want to maximize your damage done, all that stuff. But if you look at the other side of things, like getting punished, getting forced out of fights with via recall or even dying, that's gonna net you way less DP DPS than just waiting a few seconds for cooldowns to come back up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about just learning that patience, learning to ease your foot off the gas a little bit and take things a little slower. Luckily, we aren't punished. Uh, we had recall available, so it's already not too bad of a situation, but they use the SIG ult too. And I think the same thing actually, sorry to cut myself off there real quick. I think the same thing was happening to your Winston where he saw an opportunity to go deep, everyone backed up, and instead of waiting for the next set of cooldowns, waiting for the cart to push up here, waiting for your backline to take position, waiting for your Zarya to get in good range, he opted to primal in and basically try to 1v6 during that fight. Uh, and you weren't there to follow up because you already used blinks and recall. The rest of the team was still pushing payload up. No one was really in a good angle to, to punish him. And even with primal, he dies through that because he was expecting more aggression. And I think the same uh, can be said of you here. It's all yeah, about balance. Um, I think I'm not sure. I think it's like so down one and kind of like even. Oh. A little bit of hesitation there again with the pulse. I think because you're you're thinking of right like uh, let me go back real quick. From like this point on, as soon as you look at this flank, I can already tell like you're thinking of setting up a pulse play. But again, similar to that second point play, you don't have a target right now. 
and it takes you two blinks to get in range and then you try to assess a target and then you hesitate for just a second and you miss the stick on Zen. Like if we were look at it from a third person POV, you blink in, you didn't give yourself enough time to adapt to where Zen's positioning was here and you blink in hoping you're going to land on top of him. Uh, you throw the pulse bomb out, it doesn't really get much in your forced recall. So it's just wasting resources by trying to go too fast, too eagerly. And yeah, I think I that's like, a little bit of a common pick. theme. I was like, I need to get a pick here. I need to get a pick here. <laughs> that's in my yeah. head because we're down one and like mm -hmm. we want to still fight in this fight because it's not lost yet. And so we have a little bit of ults we can use. And I was like, okay, I need a pulse here. So here's the thing. Going down, uh, your Winston back here led to them finding this aggression, right? You actually had absolutely 100% the right mindset of trying to punish on this angle. But the problem is you're committing before you realize you actually have the space to do it. Does that make sense? So like mm -hmm. you're deciding to make this aggression from back here when you have zero information. You end up blinking here, looking. You see, oh, there's a Zen, there's a Brig, there's a Sigma, there's a Ball. Uh, I'm going to try and blink it, pulse Zen. And then you blink a little bit too far, the pulse goes off, you get bashed by a Brig, and you're forced out. It's, I, honestly, it's pretty lucky you weren't killed during that process. If they heard, if the Zen was faster at hearing the blink and turned and like Discord headshot you while you were stunned, you're done. So you had the right idea. Like you said, they got a pick. It's going to enable their aggression down main, which is where they were pushing. And you have an opportunity to punish that by coming in on a slight off angle and punishing these backline members who are pushing up. But mm -hmm. even if you know the flow is going uh, in this direction and you can try and punish that, you still need the information in front of your eyes. Unless someone's calling something like picture perfectly for you and you can visualize it and go ultra instinct or something. Um, it's mm -hmm. going to be very hard to enable this blindly. So yeah. take your time a little bit more. Like I said, this was the right decision. It's just the execution was a little bit rushed. Mm -hmm. like and bacon play. <laughs> yeah, you got to leave it in the oven for a little bit longer. Ooh. I I don't have a ton to say about this engagement, but it seemed a bit weird that you committed on this McCree before and then the ball followed you up. Does that make sense? Yeah. So ideally, obviously, you want the pressure to be on the tank. This is Overwatch 101 stuff. But um, ideally, before committing to the McCree, I'm not sure if you knew he had flashbang or not. It looked like he didn't, but I'm not sure if we saw that. Um, and he then did. also just I waiting did. that 0.5 seconds for the ball to roll through first takes mm -hmm. a lot of heat off you. I knew he had flashbang. That's why I blinked. That's why you blinked behind him. Yeah, you because know, I was around the corner. I'm like, like, he's gonna either blink. He's either gonna flash me when I'm gonna walk around the corner. So I blink preemptively, mm -hmm. and then if he does a 180, I blink forward again. But he didn't, so I shot. Him. <laughs> no, yeah, and honestly, you probably should have uh, won that duel. I think just a little bit uh, unlucky spread and the McCree landing some tight shots while moving nice. backwards. That's a a little bit unfortunate. But again, it could have been made into a higher percentage play by just coordinating with yeah, your team a little bit more. Yeah. Fast forward a bit. Sorry, I'm burning through time so quickly and we're still on attack. No worries. Better get all the info. Because I think you get the most information by the player in, uh, in the first half. You don't really have mm. to see second, but it's always good. Yeah, we want to cover as much as we can at least. All right, still sort of pr processing the last fight, resetting. Ooh, got lucky there. <laughs> this is the last fast push I have where I'm going to it. Oh, that's super unlucky. This is the way trick of I'm done. I guess, I don't even know what to say. That's a, that's a crazy shot from the Ash. Um, probably wasn't even aiming at you to be honest, was probably aiming at like Zarya or something. Um, small thing I could say is there's no real point of you lingering with the team here. Either blink up a little bit, try and take this angle and like punish this Sig for like cutting back so slowly and by himself. Since you see that Zen and Brig aren't here like they were before, they're, they're back down main. This both cuts off their sight line uh, and gives you a good sight line onto the enemy Sig instead of just uh, waiting back here. I understand the need to preserve cooldowns at this point. Uh, but realistically, you're not going to dive from here to here. It's just too long of a distance. It's too way too easy to punish that Winston uh, if he tries to dive this distance. So you still got a, a few seconds of setup time here. Commit two blinks or even just take this mega pack spot. Uh, cut off a few line of sights and get some extra poke damage in. 
But again, that was mainly a lucky shot from the Ash. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, I don't think it's going but I, I got triggered here. I don't think I'm done. Oh, no, I got rezzed. Oh, we got rezzed. And the trance is out. I wonder what I died to. Yeah. Like we were saying this whole time, this map is so hard to get in. There's just no avenues for you to flank realistically. Um, the fact they had trance to just shut down your aggression and and retake space meant that unless you had an ult of your own coming up, like a grav or maybe a duplicate to enable some pressure, or primal, obviously, um, very hard to stabilize that fight. Am I crazy? I thought I saw. No. I guess not. I know maybe I last second, but it seems like no. I thought I would swap. I know I swapped in one of these maps. In the same you play it for the kind of nice. Play, but... I, whew, man, I keep to choosing the right, right times to pause. Look at you go. Um, <laughs> I like this creativity on this angle. It's because, like I said, um, without taking like a ton of time and resources to fully push out these flanks, maybe even like this flank if you're going really aggressive, um, there's not much you can do solo. But this is a nice little high ground just to give yourself an off angle and ideally take some pressure off of you but again this this angle from their Kree, this angle would have been perfect if there was just slightly more pressure forward if your sig if your copy sigma was like at this corner if your ball was just rolling or like booping people at this choke for example this sight line just barely opened itself up and i think you were about to blink down anyway so it's again you're getting timing to pretty hard but yeah this was well this is one of those points where it's basically like you can either snowball it, um, or you need to have like a huge resource advantage, like in terms of alt economy or space that you you get off of second point in order to really make this comp work in this matchup. Cute little stick. <laughs> um, did you? Was that intentional on the brig? I barely saw her on nope. the screen. No, nope. no. Nope. <laughs> That's why I was looking yeah. so confused. Like. Small thing here, uh, I would notice when you were doing the Zen, um, this is 100% melee range. Uh, and when you even see him reloading and going around the corner here, just give yourself the easy kill, get the get the blink melee off. And yeah, I didn't even see her, she came out of nowhere. <laughs> he passed into the blink, yeah. uh, to the pause, because it was going to stick like, Get down, Mr. President. Uh, I'll take it. Uh... And yeah, your, your composition is just so, like, resource-based that once you don't find a big enough advantage from the initial dive and from this hard committal, um, they're able to just stabilize. And the fact that their spawn is right there, it just makes it even easier for them. So that point, obviously not favorable for the comp on attack. Like I said before, if you can snowball it, that's great. Even just snowballing for space is a huge deal. Uh, but if not, swapping to more stable anchoring DPS can be the difference maker. Swapping to an Ash in that situa situation, swapping to a McCree, where you're basically staying with the backline, but just utilizing the sight lines that Winston or Ball is affording you by their engages. Uh, I thought I said it, but maybe it's just like now. Yeah, yeah. Here I got like I was like, dude, I'm not playing Tracer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I'm playing Kree or Ash, one of the two. Uh, oh no. Oh, psych. <laughs> oh wait, no. are you going back? I'm going back. I know, so, like on this map, I did like I don't know, like because we play like we play this map pretty constantly, just so we can get it. Yeah. All right. So. Just to address it, um, I don't know your your team's prerogative during this map or anything, what you guys have decided to practice or work on in terms of comps. Um, but as a general rule, just because you struggled in one part of the map, one specific instance, uh, I would be hesitant to, to force these kind of swaps. I'm not saying like swapping McCree is a bad idea here. I think actually he probably gets more done than Tracer on defense, on first point at least. Maybe second point's debatable. Um, but just because, for example, you got stuck on third point attack, does not mean that for the rest of the map you can't play Tracer, right? Mm -hmm. And in coordinated team environments, typically you're looking for those challenges in scrims where you're looking to find the moments where Tracer is weak so that in future scrims or matches, you know when the swaps are actually necessary. So be careful about feeling uh, really frustrated, feeling like you're completely shut down as Tracer and then just swapping to that because now it's a completely different game state. One, you're on defense. Uh, and two, we're back on first point, where Tracer worked fine for you on attack. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot more roots around first point than you can abuse. Second point, these high grounds, all this stuff. There's lots for you to use. But now we're on McCree. And I'm not saying, again, going McCree here isn't a bad thing. But make but sure you're goal, you're actively but, thinking about yeah. that swap. Yeah, but the goal was not like good because I wanted to swap because I didn't think I was going to get Tracer. Yeah, exactly. And 
it might come to a point where like on match days if you guys are playing and competing as a team where it's just like well, i'm not feeling my tracer i need to swap that's fine too but for these scrims for your for practice and not just for your sake for your team's sake as well um make sure you're understanding why you're swapping and not just committing to it because you got frustrated and stuff like that okay yeah because yeah basically having mccreen set tracer changes this comp entirely it means yeah. Winston can't commit as hard. It means you can't dive as deep. It means Echo Sightlines might be a little bit less because there's going to be more pressure on her because McCree obviously doesn't have the same map pres presence that Tracer does. It means you're not going to be able to punish people like Zen as easily, people like Ash as easily. You're not going to be able that's to mark Sombras and Balls and all that. That's why we talked about it, and that's why we also went Mercy instead of Break. Uh, hmm. I'll, I'll peel for Anna. Right on. So, yeah. I'm, I'm try helping now. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just between round things. Yeah, let's fast forward. I'm scared of missing the start time. <laughs> Still we like, talking. Uh, like skip half of it, like for like the other, uh, so we can look at my other like vod for Tracer, just so we can like focus on one hero maybe. Yeah, or sure. If that's what you want to do, this is this is all up to you. This is your session. Yes, please, because I I just want to get some Tracer, like because McCree's okay for now. I just I think it's mostly for aim and uh, a little bit of positioning. <laughs> But I feel like I, I need to work on this tracer to like get like understanding on different maps. So for sure, I think Volsky is a great example of potential for tracer because this map is inherently good for dive. I think there's a ton of flank routes on all sides of the map. The high grounds are notoriously hard to hold for static DPS like McCree uh, because it's so easy to get on top of them. The hardest part I would say for this dive team is if. They are extremely good at rotating, which, based on their starting position, I'm going to guess that they're not. Um, if they start up here, you guys set up a dive up here, but by the time you're ready to dive, they're over here kind of thing. That's what kind of gets frustrating on this point, because diving across point is near impossible. But setting up dives to either of these high grounds, even this one, obviously, um, very, very strong. So, again, we're going to be looking for similar things. Uh, we're on Sombra instead of um, Echo, so... The scouting duty is not necessarily directly on your shoulders now, um, but the hard engage potential is even stronger with hack targets and all that, and having that extra DPS in the back line with you. So let's. Uh, oops, you're no let's longer. This is when my um, what do you call it? My uh, DPS, other DPS, complain about me getting him out scouted out. <laughs> okay, we'll keep an eye on that for sure then. All right, we're on some good pathing. A little bit of poke damage. I'm not really sure what this defending team's plan is. I like... Uh, I like and don't like a couple things. So one, I like that you're obviously not hard committing anywhere. When McCree looked at you, you safety blinked, and that's exactly what you need to do in those situations. The last thing you want to do is have recall forced out uh, during a setup phase, or obviously die, but ideally that never happens. Um, so you have full HP, you've got a recall available. You're down a few blinks. I think uh, you could have saved blinking... Like, maybe wait till you see them committing over here before taking this high ground, but such a small thing, I'm not going to nitpick that. Nice punish on the McCree. Not sure you needed to recall there. Um, I want the high ground. I don't, um, I don't know if like that's good to do, to like recall mm. for a high ground, or is that bad? So I'm I guessing don't... you're thinking you got the punishment here, but you're expecting them all to be inside anyway, so you're not going to get more value. So you're instead, you'd rather set up for the high ground follow-up. Yeah. I, I can understand that. Um, I would argue, though, that if they hard commit into this, you would get more value coming from behind them instead of trying to follow up here. Okay. I was thinking delivering, like, the pressure, because it seems like our team's struggling you know, at this point. <clears throat> yeah, we have lost a lot of HP, but overall, we should be at a strong advantage. One, we killed McCree. Two, we forced Baptiste Slamp, which is their best tool at denying our dive engage, right? Mm -hmm. So... If I were you, I would look to keep uh, keep the pressure up from here because you've already burned so many resources and you've eliminated your biggest threat. Unless you get hacked by Sombra or bashed by Brig, which both should be preventable, uh, given that you are mobile and uh, actively controlling their position right now. <laughs> um, I would be looking to, instead of react to them going aggressive up here, uh, you should be looking to keep the pressure on down here. You are an advantage. You don't want to give up that advantage state by playing too slowly. So you want to keep up the pressure and keep the keep the ball in their court, basically. We get forced off that high ground, but again, they're down so many resources. The nade comes through. 
I'm a little confused at where we are at this moment. I'm just going to rewatch this from overhead really quickly just to get More. an idea of how your team's doing. So let's put this on even. So we re-rotate to the high ground. Our Ana got a little bit caught out of position. And we're kind of frontline dueling here. Um, I wouldn't put this on you necessarily, but it feels like we're playing extremely slowly, like I said, when we already have a big advantage. At this point, their Baptiste must be close to building his... He's got he's 10 seconds away from lamp. He's not that close, actually. Um, so, ideally, an engage should have happened by now. Um, and that might be caused to a couple different things, either the Ana getting caught out of position, and then that leading to our tank being low HP, not wanting to dive across the point. But when they... When the enemy team here was just waltzing across the point after we had gotten that kill, like right here, this is, should be like our ideal opportunity to punish. Look at where Sombra is, look at where you are, look at where Winston can dive in from. I guess the biggest thing holding us back is the HP pool, but even then, I think this should be a fine engage. But we're not here to review Winston, so let's keep looking. I think what you were doing though was correct. You were looking for a, a strong angle. Uh, you were complimenting your Sombra's angle. And you were highlighting like ideal targets in the Baptiste, maybe even the Zarya since she got hacked. At that point during the fight, uh, seeing your team back up that much, I'd be wary of going for the pulse bomb on a tank. Typically, you only want to pulse bomb on people like Ryan or Zarya if you know you can net that kill. Because otherwise you're just feeding, one, you're not getting value out of your pulse bomb, but two, you're giving a ton of support ult charge. I'm going to look at this whole interaction from top down one more time. So, number one thing is it seems like you don't really know what to do. You're kind of lingering around here for a long time. Well, I'm lost because I, like, first of all, I, I know they're out top there and, like, I can't get there anymore and, mm -hmm. like, I was just confused, like, where to go. I guess we could go behind, but there's a Kree there. What I yeah. Saw. So, yeah, you're looking at the Kree. You get recall forced. At this point, what confused me is, one, why we were lingering so long, but I understand, like, there was sort of a fight going on, uh, and you were questioning whether or not you could commit by following up, I guess. Um, but it just looks a little bit too disorganized to really enable anything. So I think the play right now is just play slow, regroup. Uh, line up your cooldowns with Zarya and Winston, maybe even Sombra, if she's in a good position, uh, and look to create that dive potential. Um, ways you can enable that are just taking your time to get on a huge flank, or if your team wants to play for this angle for you specifically, you can just call out that McCree, and it looks like your Brig came over to pressure him out anyway, so at that point, I'd like to see you then start moving over. But before any of that can even happen, this Ryan drops down, and then you decide to go on a flank here. And this is a little bit confusing to me also. So this sort of reminds me of that uh, Blizzworld point where you lost your monkey and then you went on that short flank. I'm guessing you're trying to do something similar here. Yeah. The biggest thing you need to watch out for is how fast the enemy team is going. So they started this engage basically on the low ground, like the Rhine drop down. So this is where they're starting you can't assume that they're going to stay in this circle during their whole engage. They're more than likely going to push forward either to main or depending on where your team kites, basically. They're going to be following and chasing your team because they just found a huge kill. Uh, they're burning a ton of resources. They're looking to engage. If this was a dive right now, you'd expect them to be pushing way through your team. They're following through with their punch, basically. Um, your flank route is a little bit too optimistic. The amount of time it's going to take you to get here and punish backline uh, means they're probably not even going to be there anymore. Given that it's Baptiste uh, and Brig, they either going to be pushing up with the front line or Baptiste is going to be like on this high ground untouchable anyway. Yeah. So I like the general mindset of what you're trying to do. You're trying to punish their aggression by finding some backline value of your own. But from this position, I think the only way you're going to be able to do that is by hoping they kite away from you or, or this way maybe, and then you stay here ready to get on backline yeah. immediately. You basically just want to stay out of range of the two tanks and look to find any of these four members and, and punish them for over-aggressing so that they can stop supporting their tanks and then you can eventually find your way back into the fight. That, that was a lot of words. Does that all add up? Yeah. No, I get what you mean. Yeah. The idea here, again, just like Blizzard World was smart, but this time the problem is it just takes too much time. 
too many resources. In order for you to be here on time, you'd have to like triple blink, and then by that point, you don't have a lot of resources to actually stay in the fight. Yeah. So yeah, as you see, luckily they end up backing off actually. So, not a lot comes from that from either side. Go back to your POV here. All right, now we're just we've given up on trying to make this team fight work. Finally. And we're setting up for next. This is good. Keep your position. Map this open, this many health packs with Sombra on your side as well. Take as much of the map as you can and don't give it up. They are playing on the ground. They're not even on high grounds right now. They're, they're going to have to take time to reposition themselves if they want a strong positioning. So use that to your advantage and just own this map. If they, try, if they come force you out, you are faster than them. You can reposition faster than them. You can stay safe long enough for it takes your team to be ready. And then the more time they waste trying to chase you, if they decide to, the more... The, or I should say the less resources they'll have for the actual fight. Okay. So this is this is good pre-fight stuff. And there's even a Sombra here. I'm not sure what your Winston was doing here, actually. I thought he was still back with the team. Punish on the Sombra, though. I'm guessing the hack came through. So that already... Ooh, unlucky that your Sombra... It's, it's a little bit awkward because it seems like you and your Sombra are kind of like moving in and out at opposite times. So for example, the time you went in on that Zarya, it didn't look like Sombra was there backing you up. And now the time Sombra's going in on this McCree, it doesn't look like you're there right away to back uh, her up. So number one thing I would guess that comes down to is communication and lining up your target focus. All this, all that would take, here, let's watch from, oops, sorry. Let's look what this would look like with a uh, third person POV. All this takes is a little bit of communication and just like yelling a target. It's like, sorry, no bubble, can we punish? And then at this point, you could probably say no. Okay, that was a really ambitious move. I'm guessing you just didn't know, he didn't know where that McCree was. So that's one thing. But making sure our aggression is lining up, it's the same thing for monkey jumping and having Zarya bubble. Except that's like obviously much easier to do because it's a press of a button. Um, but you want to line up that aggression. So TPing up here was obviously a mistake from your Sombra, but it can work if you were ready to follow up the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think it was called either. Yeah. And that, that'll come down to both of you uh, learning and playing more together, getting comfortable calling for each other, and just being comfortable being vocal during these fights in general. I'm 20 HP and I go It was It was an ambitious play, and I like... I like the ambition a lot. Getting this kill in the Kree is huge. Um, at this point, you should be like thanking or counting your blessings right now because you survived after dueling the McCree and you need to be either recalling right now to get your HP back. I think you'd have time to do it um, yeah, or playing for a health pack. Whether, maybe this one's a little risky and it's not even up. So maybe it means going back to this one. Maybe it goes to this mini. Uh, maybe it means calling for like a break health pack and you just like peek at the right time. Again, communication things. Uh, but yeah, you're like... 0 0.001 seconds of Zarya beam away from dying. You're one whip shot away from dying. You're a stray bullet from Baptiste away from dying. So, I don't die here. Though. Somehow, <laughs> again, still 10 HP. Funnily enough, you're actually the last to die. Yeah, get out. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think. Your team in general there was trying to make a, a losing play work again. Uh, the grab just sealed the deal, obviously. But from that position, even trading the McCree, losing your Sombra, losing the EMP potential there meant that engage was really hard to execute. And you were playing in such tight space that it looked like you were rushing to me. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Should I scout it in here? Really risky play here from both you and Sombra. I, do you feel the need to force this fight? I'm not sure why we're committing so much time and resources to it. No, but I'm trying to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> so again, just like on Blizzard World, uh, when we saw the Ash isolated, even if even if Kree was like alone here, um, I would say this is a risky play. Maybe if both you and Sombra and you got the hack on him, you can engage on him, but going through a choke point, just come and the camera over here, he's got the, the range to his advantage, he's got the choke to his advantage, he can peek walls as much as he wants, and he's forced already a ton of resources and HP out of both of you, um, that this duel, not really a duel, but this fight is not really in your favor. And the way you make it in your favor is by involving tanks. If you have a Winston jumping up here, 
that McCree's dead 100% of the time. If you have a, a Zarya or Brig with you pocketing this aggression, he's dead 100% of the time. Um, similar, like I said on Blizzard World, when you were looking for your aggression on that Ash, um, you need to count your resources and line them up at the right time. Um, there are going to be situations where you are not favored in the duel, even though you are an excellent duelist as uh, as Ash, and, sorry, as Tracer, and versus that Ash on Blizzard World or versus this McCree here are one of those cases. So definitely don't need to force these fights um, I'm not in trying, general. I'm just trying to help him get out. Uh, he's like, <laughs> help me, help me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, definitely just committed too hard. Yeah. And I think the big... The big mistake point was Sombra throwing that Translocator. <laughs> oh no, a little bit of tunneling there going on. It's a, don't worry, it's a try hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I, th I think this is a good example of um, two teams really playing the same composition, or very similar compositions, um, mm -hmm. but not having the same coordination level. And you can see that from little interactions like Ana not being there to heal you, not tunneling too hard on a target, whatever it was. Um, and not mistiming your aggression with Sombra and stuff like that, uh, mistiming your tank aggression when you have advantages. Like, there's a lot, all these little things, but they add up so heavily. And when the enemy team is playing something more stable, more easy to play, like McCree backline, um, it's much, much, much easier to punish. Nice little EMP. Good finish. Your pulse bombs have been a little pretty hit or miss this whole review so far. I would definitely recommend um, putting some time practicing that skill. I, I, I like it's so funny because like my other like scrim like two days ago I just hit every pulse bomb. You were so popping off. <laughs> so it's yeah. like a hit or miss. Yeah, you get what you mean. Like it's hit or miss. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean the mark of a really good player isn't just popping off every now and then. It's that consistency, right? So being able to pop off in one scream and then fall behind in another means that you still have some work to do. Um, yeah, don't, I, I never don't, say I don't. I just yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's easy to measure yourself by your peaks, but it's also very it's a pretty easy lie to tell yourself. It's like oh look, I'm popping off. It's like I don't need to work on this. So just want to make sure yeah. you're not falling into that. No, I I need to work on everything. It's just hard to work on everything. At this, at yeah, I feel you. Big priority. This fight was going so well for a long time, but it looks like so. Again, I think this is a symptom of just lower level of coordination across the board for your team. Um, but this like EMP play that was going really, really well was stifled by them just sitting still and not dying, right? So the way we prevent that and the way you can prevent that individually as Tracer is by finding ways to continue aggression. And it doesn't mean right away, but it means lining up your next set of cooldowns typically. So if you're playing with a Monkey Zarya, you're waiting for the next jump, you're waiting for the next bubble and you jump deeper in here. So you started your first engagement, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, right here at the choke, and you got some good kills with grabbing MP. Next engagement needs to be deeper and punishing the member, but whether that's in here, whether that's jumping up here, uh, and you can set these up yourself. You can set up these angles yourself, whether that's by going behind in here, getting a slight off angle, ready to go deep, whether that's by setting yourself up all the way back here, if you've got time to do that. But what you don't want to do, and what I saw a lot of you members doing, including yourself, was just standing around this choke, kind of tickling them with your guns from this range where you're never going to net that kill. And mm -hmm. what that leads to is everyone thinking, oh my God, we're so far ahead in this this fight. We're going to win for sure. Just stay alive. Don't make any mistakes and we're going to be good. That's giving them the opportunity to come back in. And as we saw with their heroes coming back in from spawn even with their ultimates that they came up with, um, stagnating was just not the play. So like i said before this this composition this generally double bubble composition is very about like that ebb and flow of going in coming out going in with your next set of cooldowns coming back out uh and finishing fights off of that hard aggression based on cooldown usage but if we never find that aggression uh, or if we only find it one time and it's not enough to finish the job then we end up in situations like this where we're just flailing around a little bit individuals are doing good things some individuals are getting punished but as a team, we're falling behind. And that's because of the stability that they bring, because of the coordination they were bringing that your team didn't. Mm -hmm. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Score. Okay. Zero. Zero. I think we full hold them, though. Okay. We're still in it. <laughs> but I don't know if we win. That's the question. I, I don't remember. I think really. This must have been like a week ago. All right. Now, 
Tracer on defense can actually be a lot different in these compositions. Do you have any thoughts about how it changes between attack and defense? Mm, I'm not looking for, uh, what do you call it, um, setup. I'm waiting for like people to be out of position to punish or to commit once. I'm not like trying to always look for like, I'm trying to hold lanes. So depending on what, like if it's a mirror match on a tracer, try to hold that lane down, but also or hold the flank down. And then also looking for, yeah, I mean, to commit on dives with monkey, I guess. I think that's yeah, it. for sure. Uh, that thing you said about lanes, I, I like that a lot. So there's obviously a couple, of, a lot of routes, I should say, they can take on Voskai attack here. Um, like you said, if they're running Tracer or Ball or Sombra even, you can sit in these chokes. You can deny uh, this space from them so that they can't take space like this, right? Which is what you were trying to do on attack. Um, given this composition, you're probably not going to find a lot of opportunities like that unless you happen to catch Sombra off guard. But it's definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Um, defensively, typically, you're not as eager to set the tempo as of the fight. Sometimes you are, depending on economy and, and map position and stuff like that. But in general, it can be very, very strong to just deny their setup. And what you're talking about holding lanes is exactly that. The second thing, though, about defense uh, versus offense is that you need to be a lot quicker at reacting to the enemy team movements. So, for example, if they, and it seems to be what they are doing, if they're looking to rotate up here and take this high ground, um, you still want to play to set up a dive, set up a coordinate your cooldowns, and hit them at one of these chokes, most likely. But you're not going to be able to do that from this position. So you need to be quick to follow up uh, their movements, not just your own team's movements. Mm -hmm. So comparatively to attack, where you could see defenders on like one of these two high grounds, most likely, you can set up around that, take your time. Uh, and unless they make like crazy movements themselves, which typically defenders won't want to do if they're playing these sort of static compositions with McCree, Ryan, etc. Um, on defense, you need to be a lot more proactive about keeping up with them and being able to continuously reach these dive targets so that's what we're going to be watching it for on defense and there we are <laughs> i actually would have loved to see a dive right at this cross from your winston i think you were in a really good position i think sombra was a little bit low on hp um small thing there i think she was probably just de-stealth when she shouldn't have been and got poked but Finding if Sombra was like waiting either in here or something for this hack to go off or waiting here for them to rotate all the way through or even just waiting on this corner and then de-stealthing as they peek out during the time that Winston's jumping, during the time that you're following up from the back line. Uh, if you don't net any kills, you net a good amount of alt charge. And the fact that we didn't punish this cross, which is probably one of the more vulnerable areas they'll be in, this is also a good one to punish, obviously, but it's on a high ground, so it's slightly less accessible. Um, the fact that we're not punishing this means we're just sort of running out of option, running out of options to to find punishment areas. So now we're gonna have to punish here, or punish when they drop, or something similar. Yeah. But yeah, what you were doing was definitely really good. And I like that you're not going over aggressive here. Ooh, a little scary. Oh, your sports are all the way up there. So, I, this is a good example of playing too passively on defense. Your composition is faster and more aggressive than the enemy's composition. Just by having these two DPS, by having this tank, versus Reinhardt and McCree. So, the way that you use that to your advantage is by taking more engagements to that are to your favor. And since uh, you can't expect them just to run on point, and you can surround them and find an easy dive, you need to find these leverage points like these chokes, these crossing points, where they're not going to have a ton of reach, their backline's going to be uncomfortable in these situations, you need to be punishing that. And I think right now we're just playing a little bit too slow. Again, not 100% on you, but we should be looking for more engagements like this monkey just tried to do, but lining up our cooldowns. So now we find them dropping. This is when we should be hard committing. We're actually doing a really good job of uh, what's called ping-ponging on the point. Which is good to see, but I feel like this is more punishing them for going to the point too early than it was by making our own play. 
we kind of let them do whatever they wanted for a long time in this whole rotation and then eventually dropping to point. But if they decided not to drop the point and just took the mega pack and left Rhine on point alone, for example, there wouldn't be anyone to punish because we gave them too much space. Mm-hmm. So ideally, again, hard to do 100% of this as your job on Tracer. Um, but ideally we're setting up those dive calls and you can do that in communication by by yourself too like if you notice this slower composition taking space like this and you're not able to poke anyone down by yourself call for these dives when they're crossing here hey get ready to jump them at this choke and then we can harass them build some ult charge don't hard commit but look to poke them down maybe we'll get lucky and get a kill look to isolate them at this choke look to hard commit when they drop all these communication things should be coming through uh, and that can be your job that can be anyone's job on your team realistically um, because of how telegraphed their movement was. Oof. Man, pausing at the wrong times every time. Yeah, because we lose, but we do full open this map. Mm. Well, that's what I thought. I thought we lost it, but we did. Yeah. If this wasn't... I mean, obviously, we're playing in a scrim lobby, so the percentage doesn't really matter. Um, but if this was an overtime round, like, for example, and they only needed one and a half ticks, like it would be in a match scenario, um, you would have given up too many opportunities already. By the time this EMP came out, they already technically won the game, right? Yeah. Sorry, let me go back to you come back into this fight. <laughs> that was cute. Um, I think it's good your team's winning this fight without you, uh, because I think you're burning a little bit too much time on this McCree. As soon as he gets through this choke, um, assuming he doesn't misplay like he did by just randomly throwing that flashbang, um, there's going to be nothing you can do at this point, and it would be better, because you've already forced him out of this fight, he's in no position to follow up any engage over here, and you are, given that you have blinks, recall, all that mobility, right? So you use that to your advantage by forcing him out of the fight. It was good to catch him uh, walking blindly back to the fight, and you forced him out, you forced his roll, you forced his flashbang, and you, you do net the kill. But to be more consistent in these types of situations, um, you should be focusing on what your team is doing. And you can complement that by forcing the McCree out, but typically you don't want to be chasing for this long, I would say. Because if he gets the kill on you, that's, that's a faster fight for them when they regroup. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's a small thing, and it's going to be very contextually uh, relevant, like what's going on during the fight, who, who's the target you're uh, you're looking to abuse coming back to the fight and stuff like that, but in that specific situation. Nice little pulse. I'm surprised that actually net the kill. I thought she might be too topped up. It's like, what are you doing, AFK, and then use personal bubble? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely a bit of a cocky play from that area. This is a little dangerous, but I like the way you're using cover. If they, based on their movement, I was expecting them to go up here and try to take the space from you. So if you blink down here, again, you don't have 100% info about who's in here. If their brig was like about to walk up these stairs, that's at least a force recall off you, most likely. Or McCree was about to walk up these stairs, that might be a kill. So, again, blinking optimistically, I would say. But, in this case, it definitely pays off for you. And you're doing the right thing by punishing their rotation when their focus is elsewhere. I think I just would have liked to see you wait for a little bit more information. This McCree, you've got his number. Optimistic shatter from the Reinhardt. And this is what happens when you play these slower compositions versus uh, a composition that's good at engaging, but you don't take the time to set up the space for it. So they're McCree, they're Baptiste, they are not happy with this positioning, obviously. They are not in a good position to, to take these fights, and then things like this happens where you just clean them up. Not a lot to say here. Um, your positioning was good. I think the aggression that your Winston was enabling was good. Uh, this angle follow-up, it's not like amazing. Uh, this angle up here is not amazing either, but you're getting your job done, which is what counts. And you don't need to find amazing angles, especially when they're just running it down to point. All you have to do is be there to do your job, and that's exactly what you're doing. 
I like the way you're focusing down um, tanks when it's relevant too. Like for example, when that Ryan got grabbed here and you saw he got purple, you're, fo you're focusing him and not trying to get like one-on-one -on -one value versus a Baptiste or something. Because that would be over aggression and that would that's what's going to get you punished. So good to see that level of awareness. Now they're finally rotating again. And then EMP Primal, my god. They are gone. That should be the last fight. Alright. Good round. Well, our time ended up perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, any questions before I sort of give a, a rundown of what we talked about? Not really. Um, I'm curious if, to see how, because comp is completely different. I'm mm -hmm. curious how because i'm struggling with some comps so like maybe i'll do a comp but maybe with you too and see how that goes I'm yeah curious. if you're interested the biggest thing from comp compared to organized team play is you can't expect the level of value from your teammates you kind of either have to react to what they're doing more often um, or just make your own solo plays especially as someone like tracer so you can't expect them to do the right thing or what you ex you anticipate to be the right thing um, based on your time playing in scrims or whatever but what you can do is react to what they are doing, react to their personality, their their play style and stuff like that, and make that work as much as you can. And playing these flexible heroes like Tracer can be really good for that, but it can also be really punishing if you have a set play style in mind that you're that you're trying to force. Right. So it's good to keep that in mind. The um, last question would probably be as um if uh if you um what do you think about like playing because I play like I told you I'm in two teams and I scrim mm -hmm. like every other day and i uh, like i scrim at least like two hours of my like normal comp time i play on like scrims is that like okay and i like play like four hours of comp i don't know like i'm trying to think if it's value to just play more comp than play or play in scrims more and then don't worry about the thing um biggest thing at the end of the day you should be doing what you feel you are getting the most out of whether that's the most fun whether that's just enjoyment, whether that's you feel you're improving in a team environment and that's what you enjoy doing. I know many, many people who prefer playing in a team environment to comp to just random ranked games for so many reasons, uh, but obviously that doesn't add USR or, or rating or anything like that. So if you have specific goals in mind, whether that's just be the best team player, get uh, placed at a certain tournament with a team, or just enter tournaments and stuff like that, scrim together X amount of time, or if you have different goals, whether that's related to SR and climbing and stuff like that, improving yourself that way, um, it's going to come down to your individual goals and what you have the most, what you get the most out of both of those things. So I'm not, I don't think one is inherently better necessarily for, especially for training things like mechanics and stuff like that, but you will definitely gain more from scrimming um, when it comes to high level game sense and stuff like that and decision making. But necessarily, oh, sorry, I should say, that won't necessarily translate to comp every time, right? So it's kind of like a mixed bag where there's pros and cons to both, and it's going to come down to what you what you want to develop the most as a player, mm -hmm. is what I would say. There's no cookie-cutter answer. Everyone's going to be different. Um, me, personally, I love scrimming, but I haven't done it in years because I've put all my focus on coaching. Um, but when I was scrimming, and like playing on amateur teams and stuff like that, I basically lost all motivation to even play ranked because it was just so much f more fun to me. It was a better learning environment, all that stuff. I feel like I learn more, but I want to also like get in higher teams. So like, because mm -hmm. I'm looking to like, I want to see how far I can get, of course. But like, I really enjoy playing Overwatch. So I mean, I want to see if I could get what do you call it to like maybe uh, GM teams. But like, yeah, and that's awesome. And unfortunately, the reality is a lot of teams will base a lot of their judgment off sr alone when they can't judge other things about your your play style and stuff like that um yeah. so it is important well, if you are looking to try out for those kind of teams to grind out some ladder time um what i would say in general is try to balance uh, make sure you're not burning yourself out scrimming too much or if you're getting tilted in ranked probably take some time off and stuff like that but keep those goals in mind keep motivating yourself to keep playing based on what you're trying to achieve and it doesn't just mean going brain dead and queuing ranked for 12 hours it means actively learning every time you play it means actively assessing your mistakes and looking for ways to improve and stuff like that okay yeah. that's some of the questions i had <laughs> awesome but yeah just quick rundown of the main stuff 
um, from these VODs. Um, talking about the team aspect, that coordination, I think it was pretty night and day between the first VOD and the second VOD about like your tank aggression and your, your ability to follow that up, where in the first VOD, you were actually getting ahead of your team a, a couple times uh, and trying to do too much solo, and it would have been better for you to wait for that coordination to come through, wait for those cooldowns to come up, and just layer them on top of each other. And then the second VOD, it seems like your team in general was playing a little bit too slowly, uh, and you can look to enable them more by either stepping up in communication, stepping up in scouting, stepping up in target focus, all that kind of things, all those kind of things, and really just enable that aggression as much as possible because um, while you are mainly there to follow up, you still have a lot of information available as the tracer player in those situations. You have a lot of information in your hands. You have a lot of opportunities to call those engages. So don't be afraid to step up and do that in your team environment, I would say. Okay. Yeah, um, I find sorry. calming and just said, uh, yeah, that's kind of happens. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, your mechanics were pretty solid. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about your aiming. The biggest things were uh, blink recall management. There were a couple times you were over committing blinks in probably less than desirable situations, uh, which led to you forcing recall or sometimes getting picked off. Um, so watch your, watch your blink aggression. Uh, make sure you are able to close the distance you are expecting to close and make sure you are able to have enough resources available for those hard committal moments, for the hard dives. Um, other than that, work on your blink pulse bombs. Um, a couple times that we saw it should have hit, because, but you just didn't give yourself enough time to assess the situation or you mistimed, misjudged the, uh, the blink range. So like you said, I'm sure there are times you pop off, but I didn't see that tonight, so I'm going to tell you to work on it. <laughs> okay, sounds good, yeah. No worries. Uh, yeah, I will definitely work on the pulse. Pul uh, pulses. Yeah, I need to work on pulses and then like bleak, uh, bleak management. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, your mindset when it came to these scrimmer mines, I think was really, really good. Your positioning... Overall, like I'd give you an A plus. Your positioning, you were almost always in the right position at the right time. Um, it's just you didn't always have the, the right resources or your team didn't have the, the level of coordination required to make those plays work. So positioning and awareness seemed really, really good. Um, you were really good at punishing overextended members. Like we saw that Sombra right away on Blizzard World. Uh, we saw a couple mistakes that McCree made on the Volskaya that you were able to punish. So really good positioning and follow-up. It's just about making that... 100% consistent based on how your team's finding the engage. And that's going to mean, like we already talked about, the cooldown management, um, talking in, in communication-wise about scouting, about positioning, about enemy positioning, and about lining up that dive target. Mm -hmm. The mental game of Overwatch, of just having the confidence to go into those games and execute what you're trying to execute, uh, is a tough one. And I've I've heard the same thing from pro players, like, I am, I'm scared to go against this guy because he's insane, or I'm, in, I'm scared to go up in this matchup because we've, we've struggled in the past or in scrims and stuff like that. Um, the best advice I can give you, and this is going to be something you'll have to work on throughout your whole gaming career, is just stop thinking about the, the numbers and the things around you and start focusing on what you have control over. Start always thinking about, like, say you're playing Tracer and Comp, and you're, you're going for your your master's game or whatever it is, your promotion game. Mm -hmm. um, instead of thinking about like, okay, if I win this, I'm going to be promoted. This is all I need to do is pop off and then I'm going to be masters. All that's going to do is guarantee that you won't pop off. <laughs> like that's, that's the opposite mindset of what you need to be having. So you want to be consistent in your gameplay and consistent with your mental about going into games. So always be thinking about what you should be doing in the specific moment based on what's happening in the game, not based on what's outside of the game, not based on what the R-Star is, not based on what the enemy team's players are. Just think of them as heroes, and this is how you play against X-Hero. We're playing this map. I should be covering this space. I'm playing against another Tracer. I should be expecting her to take this flank. I'm playing against a McCree. I need to be bait baiting out his flashbang. Keep those, rem keep remembering those simple things, and you'll be, fo you'll be closer to forgetting about all those externals. Remind yourself constantly about all the things you should be working on, things you should be taking, paying attention to, and then that'll passively sort of white noise all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's not it's not going to be something where you go into your next comp game and it's just you flick a switch and it's just you can ignore it, but no. it's something you should be trying to push yourself towards as your ideal gaming experience, I should say. So mm -hmm. there's a couple tricks you can try to do this uh, to try and make this easier. You can try like leaving yourself notes. I know players who like put sticky notes on their monitor or just have like a notepad open on a second monitor where it's like every time they die, instead of getting tilted or getting frustrated, they look at those notes like, okay, next next time I spawn, I'm going to be focusing on these areas because that's what I need to work on. 
or if it's a map specific thing or a composition or a hero specific thing, it's like always reminding yourself. It's like, even if I've already done this 10, 10 out of 10 times, make sure the next 10 times I'm also doing it. Okay. That's the yeah. best advice I can give. It's, it's like I said, it's not, it's not black and white. It's not easy to do, but that's the best advice I can give you to push yourself in the right direction. Yeah, okay. That, that's actually helpful. I've never thought about putting notes. I started slowly not getting tilted at like my teammates, like tank shooting and all mm -hmm. that. And that that like helped, but like it was just a big mental like yeah. change of like not getting tilted if a tank just feeds and like because there's a lot of Ryan's and Diamond that just like to charge and I just mm -hmm. get tilted that because it's like you're playing Korea and you just see your Ryan charge and into the yeah. Like, yeah okay now I like okay when that happens I need to play differently and like look for more value and I started like thinking about that then thinking about that guy charging into thirteen exactly you got it yeah at the end of the day it's about what you can control individually not about what's happening around you. Mm -hmm. alright thank you then All right. uh, I'll think that's a good place to end it man